Oh, sorry. The time is now 6 o'clock, and I call this uh, special board meeting of the West Coast ISD School Board Trustees <coughs> to order. Item number two, establishment of a quorum. Let the record reflect that everyone is present, uh, with the exception of Oscar Caballero and our president, David Fuentes. Uh, at this time, I would like to just take a, a moment and uh, recognize our, our board member, David, uh, I mean, uh, excuse me, Oscar Caballero, which lost his father last week, and uh, the family, I'm sure, are going through a, a time of, of pain and, and, uh, and uh, hardship. And I ask our Lord to uh, please uh, find, give them peace at, in this time, and I'd like to ask for a moment of silence. Thank you. Moving on to item number three, uh, discussion, consideration, and possible action to temporarily include NAP Medical Center on the exclusive provider level of the West ISD Health Benefit Plan while the parties negotiate an acceptable pricing structure. I called, this, uh, I called for this item, both uh, Andrew and I, and um, we just feel that it's very important that our, that our employees uh, have the service at home that uh, that we need. Uh, we have tried to uh, work through our differences, and and it's uh, with NAP, and it's still a, a in the process. Uh, Mike, uh, our insurance, our loss prevention has uh, tried to and is in active negotiation, and will continue. So at this time. Uh, Mike, if you want to give us a, an update on, on this, on where we're at, that way we can continue. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Lopez. Um, as you're aware, we had a uh, meeting with the uh, CEO of uh, Nat Medical Center. I believe it was on September 13th, I believe. Um, there was some discussion. Uh, we weren't able to work anything out at that meeting. Uh, we did follow up with the letter and an offer uh, to Mr. Lopez uh, immediately or shortly thereafter that meeting. Uh, we have not heard a response, either uh, affirmative or a negative or a counteroffer back from them. Uh, last week I did follow up with an additional email uh, to Mr. Lopez and uh, I still have not heard anything back from them. So that's where we're at right now. Okay. So what does the agenda item mean as far as... Uh being the exclusive provider, does that mean they're the only ones? No, sir. They're in a higher tier. The only other hospital that's in that uh, in the EPO right now is uh, Doctors Hospital Renaissance. Okay. So, so what what does the agenda mean? Are they so they're not exclusive then? They're not the only ones. They're not in the top tier, no, sir. So what does that mean? Can can we still can the district still go and go in into an app? <coughs> yes, employee. Under the way it's worded. Well, em employees can still utilize NAP. I believe the intent of Mr. Lopez's agenda item was to include NAP in the Tier 1 EPO benefit tier uh, while a more amical or while a pricing solution is negotiated. As you know, we did uh, advise NAP that they were no longer going to be in the EPO. Uh, they were going to be a PPO network, and, of course, they declined, and they chose to be out of network. So I guess the intent of your item, Mr. Lopez, is to... Uh, allow our employees to still utilize and get tier one benefits while we're uh, negotiating. Mr. Letter, I'm sorry. Perhaps a clarification of what are the uh, benefits of being either EPO or PPO tiered? In the exclusive provider organization, our pricing structures that we have in place with at least one hospital is favorable enough to allow employees to access these facilities at a $250 deductible versus regular PPO of a $750 deductible. So it is less money out of the employee's pocket. So, of course, that creates a lot of steerage to these facilities. Mike, um, just so that we're aware, because NAP is an out-of-network and not part of our PPO, yes. that deductible is actually $1,000. That is correct. But right now, if, if we take um, action on this item and include them as an exclusive provider, it won't, they're not gonna, they don't have to pay that $1,000 am I right? That that, correct. That's correct. That's correct. The 250, correct. but of course, and NAP, so you could negotiate the deal. Yeah, NAP would have to agree to the pricing structure that we had in place <clears throat> before. So, okay. And if they don't, they then they're off. They shouldn't. But I would certainly bring that back to the board if they yeah. refused. 
My concern right now, Dr. Rivera, is that uh, I don't want, do not want any of our employees to be steered away from Wessico with a medical emergency due to the higher deductible that is presented, present to them right now. And that is why I brought this item, or both they, Andrew and I brought this item forward. No, and I'm glad that you guys did, you know, because it is, it, it is a big concern. Not only that, but, as, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Wessico is the, it's the, you know, as far as employee, you know, and then it's a nap, am I right? Well, that's why it baffles, that's why I'm at a loss to why they would consider choosing to be out of network. Yeah, you know what's That is correct. Um, we are the largest employer in the city. And then it's and then it's not medical. And that being said, like I said, it, it, it really surprises me why they would take that course of action, but here we are. Well, Mike, I'm, I know you're doing a great job, man, and I, and I hope that, you know, you guys can come to a, a deal and hopefully they can, you know, be part of our exclusive, uh, provi uh, to be an uh, exclusive provider, man. I'm really hoping it works out. Mike, do you foresee... Um, any problem going back to the 9-1 date? We will certainly explore it. Um, really, there's right now there's <coughs> currently six claims that are um, in the can, if you will, or in process. So uh, certainly it uh, makes a lot of sense for to make this agreement back go 9-1. So um, like I said, it'd be, it'd, be to, it'd be mutually beneficial for the employee and the hospital. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll... I'm trying to make sure that, that our employees are well taken care of, and and, uh, and that's why I put this item on, on, uh, on the agenda. And uh, at this time, if, if you all want to make a, a motion. I'd, I'd like to yeah. say before you make a motion that, that the board, Mr. Lopez, um, you, you guys are going yeah. above and beyond being reasonable here. I mean, um, you guys really are. I mean, because we have taken steps, uh, but this... Olive branch, if you will. I mean, you guys are really going above and beyond, you know, uh, yeah. what we should I, I be doing. I wanted to add, if I may, too, that uh, the same week that this item was, was on the agenda, that there was a, a contingency from NAP Medical that very same week at the urgence of your colleagues on the board, we did call together uh, a meeting with the um, CEO at Correct. NAP Medical. And both Mr. Lopez and Mr. Gonzalez were adamantly in support of employees and in support of this district. And Ivan Perez was present too, urging him to take the message to his corporate officers that we were willing to work closer on, on uh, bringing a pricing uh, level that was acceptable so that both the hospital and district employees could benefit. He was uh, open, he was listening, but at the end he went away saying, I'm not authorized to make a decision. We've waited. Uh, Mr. De La Rosa did try to solicit from him a response, and we have <coughs> not heard from them. I think this is an additional demonstration that this district is willing and able, and, and that we very much want to work with the hospital if they will meet us halfway. I commend certainly the board for taking the initiative to put this back on the agenda and to give NAP Medical additional time to hopefully come together with us on this matter. And if you guys can continue letting people know that we're working, you know, us as a board, we're working with NAP, you know, let our employees know, hey, we want what's best for them. And also what's best, you know, we'd mm -hmm. like to deal with NAP but um, yeah, if we can keep also our employees up to date as well with what, what's going on. I mean, I don't know if you can, but I mean, if you, if you can, I mean, it would be good. So they've not, cho they've not chosen to meet with you? In other words, you made them an offer. Mr. Lopez did meet. Is it Mr. or Dr.? Dr. 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 Lopez. Lopez. My apologies. Dr. Lopez did come, and he did meet with us that one time. But uh, as I said, Mr. De La Rosa has sent a follow-up email. Uh, we've not heard from him. That's what I, under, that's what I can understand. If, if you met with him. Yes, sir. And he's willing to work with us. We're going to negotiate, but yet he's not approached you to, to try to settle it? No, sir. So, what's, why? He said is he there, had to go back to corporate. There, I'm sorry? He had to go back to corporate. Okay, so there's something there that's holding him back. Apparently, uh, his comments to us were that decisions would be made at the corporate level in California, mm -hmm. not at his level. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Okay. 
Okay, the item does read uh, a time, temporary, and uh, so any motion that is made, uh, I will ask uh, this board to uh, give us a date as to how much time we should give uh, Mike De La Rosa and Knapp uh, Medical to come to an agree uh, agreeable term on this insurance. Mike, what, what's time I'd, I'd recommend, well, uh, I would recommend December 31st. December 31st. I'll go ahead and make the motion and that uh, we give them till December 31st to negotiate a deal with that medical center. And, and to include them in the exclusive You'll provider level? Until we, okay. I mean, I'll that's what we want, right? Yes. I'll second. Okay. <coughs> okay, we have a motion by Adrian and a second by Andrew Gonzalez. Uh, <coughs> any discussion? Just, just so I can be clear. Is this what they want? Do they want to be on the exclusive provider, or do they want something else? They want to be in the exclusive provider. That's what they want. Yes, sir. And using using their price pricing structure. Well, the pricing structure is not really in the most the most advantageous to the district. That's why we went back back and forth with them. But certainly, um, it would give us the employees and us an opportunity. I guess, like I said, to show some goodwill. So. So in the motion, they keep. They keep exclusive, but they keep the prices that they are asking, not the ones that we're asking. That's correct. Now, it would be yes. the price that was negotiated last year, though, correct? It will be the old agreement that the we had. The old agreement. Yep. Yes. So it was what we were already paying. What we were already paying, correct. Yep. Now, this is a temporary measure to allow Mike to correct negotiate. this or get it close, to like negotiate. Dr. Leo said, yeah, to negotiate and okay. come to some amicable yeah. me medium. Middle yes, point. So I just want to make sure because that's the reason he's given us as the reason that he's got to check with his bosses and not something else. In in the meeting, Doctor Rivera, that was what he clearly stated to us that he could not uh, make, make the any kind himself. of decision. Corporate decision had to be from corporate, and we urged him to that it was time was of the essence. And it's been how long has it been since we met, Mike? Almost four weeks. Yeah. It's been four weeks. And the only per people that are in jeopardy is our, our employees and any medical emergency that they might have in the meanwhile, and, and I don't think it's right. But they're covered under this motion, the employees? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. They're still covered. Mm -hmm. However, a person might think twice due to the higher deductible about coming to Westlaco, and, and, and that should not even be a, a thought that goes into a person's mind. It should be, where's the closest hospital if I need it? And I don't know, but I'm just thinking, and, and again, you have to ask these guys, but I wonder if their, if their issue is that they want to be the only hospital on the network and not, not anyone else. Are they arguing that? No, they no? have not argued that, no. Okay. I'm, I'm ready to vote. Okay. So we have a, again, I'll, we have a motion by Adrian and a second by Andrew. All those in favor? signify so by saying aye. aye 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 opposed motion carries thank you thank you gentlemen now uh moving on to item number four closed meeting to discuss item number one confer with legal counsel regarding superintendent search texas government code 551.071 and 551.074 and then we'll come back and if there's any action on those the time now is 6.14. The time is now 6.31, and we're back from uh, closed session into open session. I'll give uh, a moment so that they can change the tapes back there for us. Okay, item number five, possible action if necessary on items discussed in closed meeting. We had one, but number one, which was conferred with legal counsel regarding superintendent search, Texas Government Code 551.071 and 551.074, and that's a non-action item. 
So that's it. Uh, moving on to item number six is adjournment. So move. We are adjourned. The time is now 6.32. Let the record reflect before we go off record. I'm sorry, that um, Adrian left at 6.25.